so recently revealed Donald Trump had been awarded Time Magazine Person of the Year. This is quite a well-known accolade, um, and there's a few misconceptions about it. One of the main misconceptions is that it is some sort of honour awarded by Time. The purpose is not an honour in the sense of a Nobel Prize, but it's a recognition of someone's influence, for good or bad. So I believe it was 1933, Adolf Hitler won. Um, 2001, there was actually controversy over why Osama bin Laden didn't win. That year it was Rudy Giuliani. So Donald Trump has won this year, and I, I think, um, you know, time does get it wrong sometimes, but I think they made the right decision this time. If we look at back, back throughout this year, there's a lot of people that have had a big influence um, or have been in the news a lot, such as uh, Hillary Clinton, um, Nigel Farage, possibly, um, some European leaders, I guess, because of the Brexit debates. David Cameron resigned, there's been others. But when we look back, um, I think it is fair to say that Donald Trump has really created a political earthquake. And I know there's people that detest him. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Trump, but the point is he, love him or hate him, he's had a massive influence. And that's what this is about. So I think they made the right decision. Um, Donald Trump, person of the year, 2016. Although the man himself couldn't even resist uh, being classic Trump and uh, getting into, not feud, but making an issue of it. He said, oh, it used to be man of the year. I mean, really, take a compliment, Donald. You Can he... Is he saying that he's not a person now? I mean, it's, he was trying to say it's a politically correct thing. I don't think it is, because if you have a particular year where a woman is the most influential, then, yeah. I mean, last year it was Angela Merkel. Okay, so I was going to talk about that, but I thought I'd expand it a little bit, and I'll try to not make this video too long. But it got me thinking, who is the most famous person in the world? At this particular time, Donald Trump is president-elect, so there's a lot of focus on him. So, aside from being time person of the year, I think it would be fair to think he could be the most famous person in the world at this particular moment. But there's other points, for whatever reason, another person might be temporarily the most famous person in the world. Back in January, it was arguably Leonardo DiCaprio, having won the Oscar Award for Best Actor, and having waited for several years. Um, DiCaprio's always famous, but at that particular moment he was possibly the most discussed person. And then there's other moments. Uh, Hillary Clinton temporarily, when her whole email thing was being discussed. David Cameron on the day that he resigned. So there's particular moments when a person might be best known person. Theresa May on the day that she became Prime Minister, not now. So when we look at People in the spotlight, obviously there's different categories, there's politics, leaders, there's terrorists for that matter. Um, I mean, al-Baghdadi is probably quite famous for all the wrong reasons. Um, not as famous as Osama bin Laden, though. I'm not quite sure why, perhaps it's because he's more elusive. Whereas bin Laden, everyone knew what bin Laden looked like, whereas al-Baghdadi, there's only one or two images around of him. Um... Yeah, so leaders, um, pop stars, actors, and not all the time, just in a particular moment, perhaps a new film's coming out or they've got a new single release. Um, sports people, of course. Um, it, I think it's very difficult to measure this with any sort of exact science. I mean, you could type a name into Google and see how many results come up. That is one way, or into YouTube. But that's deceptive because, for example, in some countries, YouTube is blocked such as China. So again, that wouldn't be the best barometer. Um, so I'm going to offer some suggestions. I, I think there's people who are famous at a particular time because they are in office or because they are in the news for good or bad. I mean, this year, for instance, Dilma Rousseff in Brazil has got more attention than she has in the last four years of her presidency. But that's negative attention. Uh, the same with uh, General Park Yun hye excuse me, President Park Geun-hye in South Korea. Um, again, she's facing impeachment hearings. I think she will be. She will have to resign. Um, so you get situations of leaders in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. Francois Hollande is uh, going through abysmal uh, personal ratings and he's the first French president 
not to run for re-election since um, the 50s. Every world leader, by virtue of their office, will have some recognition, Every, uh, especially of bigger countries. And that just goes by virtue of the country that they represent, whether they are a big leader or not. I mean, Theresa May is well known simply for being the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She's not particularly controversial. Uh, she's not particularly exciting, but she is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Um, whether Brexit is going to have an impact on how the role of the British Prime Minister comes across remains to be seen. Um, but I don't think she's as famous as Angela Merkel, who's been around a lot longer. Francois Hollande. Justin Trudeau, I would say, has got a lot more attention than would be than would be normal for a Canadian Prime Minister. I mean, I think he's got a lot more focus around the world for right or wrong than um, Stephen Harper did. Then, of course, Barack Obama is the sitting US president. The reason I wouldn't put Obama in the number one spot right now is that although he is still very famous, he could easily be in the top five. Um, he's essentially done everything he can do in his presidency. So these months are sort of, in a sense, a great game duck months. Um, but Barack Obama, of course, as president of the United States. And then there's people in his inner circle, Michelle Obama, Joe Biden. John Kerry is high profile. I think Secretary of State, the reason there is so much focus on it is because essentially um, it's what we would call the Foreign Secretary in the UK. It is the person who will be the face of the United States and arguably the most prominent person um, of the administration other than the president themselves. I'd say more so than the vice president. So John Kerry is definitely up there. Sergei Lavrov in Russia has, uh, I think him and Kerry are sort of this double act. Uh, obviously, there's a disagreement about a massive range of issues on Syria, but this era will be remembered as the Kerry Lavrov era when it comes to foreign policy, I believe. Vladimir Putin, very, very powerful man, possibly the most powerful man in the world. Um, Putin's always influential, so Putin's always going to be up there. Xi Jinping, um, Xi Jinping is very powerful, but there's still many people in the world who would automatically be able to defend him whether that's his laziness or whatever. Um, so I don't think he's as famous as Putin. I mean, I you know, I know of him because I follow politics, but there are many people, if I went into the street and said Xi Jinping, they might guess, but they, they wouldn't know the name in the way they would know Putin. Um, then there's obviously controversial leaders because for whatever reason, either they're a dictator, like Kim Jong-un or Robert Mugabe, um, or they are simply controversial, uh, like Rod Gil Duterte in the Philippines. Duterte has been making a lot of headlines this year. Narendra Modi, another controversial leader. Then there are people who will temporarily be very famous because they were famous, but because they have died. So, for example, a month ago, it was Fidel Castro. His name would have been trending more than anyone else. But this particular time, he's only famous for having passed away, whereas the times he was particularly famous was during the Cuban Revolution and the Bay of Pigs and so on. So sometimes uh, the same with Muhammad Ali. Um, and that is, to me, people who are influential throughout their lives and they're famous throughout their lives, um, but they may have been out of office or out of their sport for a long time. Again, another example is John Glenn, the astronaut and politician. He's sort of been out of the public mind for a while, but he passed away. He's an influential American, so he's going to be trending. And by the way, I don't mean that in a morbid sense. It's just, a, it's just an observation. In the world of sports, I think this one is very much depends on what sports you follow. As a boxing fan, I would be tempted to say people like Floyd Mayweather, Vladimir Klitschko, Manny Pacquiao, possibly Anthony Joshua, are big, big names in the sport. Canelo Alvarez. But there'd be people outside the world of boxing who wouldn't necessarily know those names, except possibly Manny Pacquiao. So I guess that comes down to bias. Likewise, there'd be tennis fans and golf fans who would know people I wouldn't necessarily recognise. So when it comes to sport, I think that is quite, it's very, very, very rare for a sports star to transcend their sport. Muhammad Ali did. Manny Pacquiao arguably did. Um, but it is very rare. Um, in the world of entertainment, you obviously have big Hollywood actors. Their fame is ongoing. Tom Hanks, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, and so on. 
and then you have people in the world of music, of course, who either have been very successful in the past and they're still well known, like Bob Dylan, or artists of today, Beyonce, Rihanna, Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber. So fame is an interesting subject, and it isn't that easy to actually gauge because you could have people who are famous internationally. I think everyone I've mentioned is famous internationally. Then you have people who are famous within their country. Sometimes, for example, in Family Guy, they would quote people and I'd have to look up who is that. So they're people who are just well-known in the United States. Then getting even more narrow, you get people who are only well-known within their own state or um, in a particular region. Now, in the UK, Ant and Dick are very well-known. Most British people probably know who Ant and Dick is, but outside the UK, people probably wouldn't know. Um, and then there's people who have ongoing positions. Queen Elizabeth II, she's not particularly in the news at the moment, but she is the queen, and she's the most famous royal in the world, so possibly the most famous woman. So when people say the queen, they automatically think of Queen Elizabeth II. They don't think of the Queen of Denmark or the Queen of Spain or the Queen of Thailand. Um, they think of Queen Elizabeth II. So yeah, fame is a very interesting concept. Um, there's many, many others I haven't mentioned. There will be people whose name, like I say, are trending. Rex Tillerson right now, simply because he's being considered for Secretary of State. Kanye West, because he's met with President Trump, President-elect Trump. So I'm going to leave the question out there. Who do you think is the most famous person in the world and why? Second question, who is the most famous person in your country? In my country, I would say, I can't say number one, but probably the Queen, Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn, there are former leaders who are still well known, obviously, Tony Blair, David Cameron, but in the exact moment, Theresa May, um, Jeremy Corbyn, possibly Nicola Sturgeon, then celebrities, David Beckham still well recognised, Anthony Joshua in boxing, but again, outside boxing, I don't know. Carl Frampton would be probably the most famous person in my native Northern Ireland, um, possibly the greatest fighter ever from there, actually. So it is an interesting concept. Um, you know, there'd be people that others wouldn't necessarily recognise. I think it's very rare that you get a celebrity who is genuinely known by everybody. It's rare, but it does happen. A few years ago, David Beckham went into an African village for some charity project, and all the kids swarmed around him. They knew him automatically. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, indeed. There's entrepreneurs like Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Ma in China, um, Bill Gates, of course. So, yeah, this is an interesting subject. Tim Cook, possibly. Um, let me know your thoughts. Who are the most famous people in the world? Who are the most famous people in your country? And why do you think so? Incidentally, office doesn't necessarily always mean attention. Philip Hammond is currently the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK. He's the second most powerful person in the country. He is a long-serving minister. But he's not necessarily well known. I think a lot of members of the public wouldn't even know the name Phil Hammond, which is unfortunate actually, because it demonstrates a disengagement from from those who run our lives. But um, I think the reason is simply because he's not controversial. I think it goes without saying that politicians who are controversial, who say controversial things, are going to be better known than those who don't. I think the reason Theresa May and Philip Hammond are not that well known as they otherwise would be, is simply because they're not that controversial. They're a safe pair of hands. It's not to say they don't do anything that is controversial, but their mannerism is very calm and ordered, and so that could be the reason. Um, in Italy, Matteo Renzi got a bit of attention recently for having resigned. Uh, the new man in Italy, I can't even remember his name, and that's coming from someone who follows politics, um, because Italy has suffered, I think, from unstable government. Recep Erdogan in Turkey, Bashar Assad in Syria, indeed. Um, and there's many others. I'm sure there'll be others that I fail to mention. Let me know your thoughts. Who do you think is the most famous person in the world or in your country and why? Thanks for watching.